Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be talking about how you can make your renders look quite nice. It's a common problem for beginners that their renders can look quite flat and dull. So I'm going to start this video with a very quick tip to show you how you can liven them up. And then I'll also give some more advanced tips for more intermediate users. So I've got this dog model and I want to make him look nice when he's rendered. Let's go to the shading tab to start off with at the top up here. And that takes us into look dev mode. So if I were to render with sort of very flat lighting with an HDRI in the background, I'll talk more about that in a second, he would come out like this. So fairly flat and fairly boring really. Now some of you may notice I've got these three lines going on here and those are three lights. That's the quickest and easiest way to add good lighting to objects. And the thing you want to look up if you want to learn more about this is three point lighting, cinematic lighting and cinematic composition. But as a very simple guide, the really basics of lighting is often a three point lighting setup. So you have three lights, your key light, your fill light and your backlight. And a general rule, and one they often use in things like interviews and so on, is your key light is your brightest. I'll just go to the lighting settings down here. So you can see this light bulb here. Click on that. And I'll also go up to the render tab as well. That will help us. So now we're seeing the scene with the lights. So you can see my key light is a simple sun on a strength of two. So you can shift A and add light, sun, and you'll get this sun. I point it downwards towards the object, so most light is from the top, and therefore you want to keep that sort of system. And I tend to position my lights around my subject, but really they could be right on top, it doesn't matter. Where you move it to, the rotation is the thing that matters, as you can see, it having effect on my object. So I'll undo that. So they're all pointing at my object like that. So like I say, the key light has a strength of two, and I've given it, in this case, a slight color. I'll talk more about that in a moment. My fill light, has a strength of one. So it's just filling in the shadows on the other side. And there's a backlight. And now the backlight, you can vary quite a lot depending on the look you want to get. So at the moment it's one for a simple three point lighting setup, but you could put this right up to something like 50 and you can kind of see the effect that has of giving him this weird shine at the back there, especially from this angle. So if you want sort of this outside glow, you put the backlight opposite to the camera and it brightens up those areas. The reason why I've gone for different colors, it just offers that bit of variation. I tend to use blue for the backlight. I find that works quite nicely. Yellow for my key light. And I vary between a sort of ready color or a greeny color anywhere across these two sides. So you can see the yellow and the blue are opposite each other, key and backlight. And the fill light can be either side of the two. So that should be enough to give you nice, basic, good looking renders. But if you want some slightly more advanced stuff, then keep listening. If you go across to the render tab, make sure you've got ambient occlusion turned on and that will fill in the shadows nicely. And generally it's a bit nicer if it's turned up just a touch, like so. Now what I almost forgot to mention, that if you've got your ambient occlusion on, you will need to set up your nodes accordingly. So if I click on my dog at the moment, I've got the normal principle BSDF, but into the color, I have an ambient occlusion node that can be found by pressing Shift A, input ambient occlusion. I put that into a mix RGB node. So shift A, color, mix RGB. You hook it up to the bottom one and the top one is the actual color of your object. So any color that you want your object to be, you set the top one. The bottom one you plug in and you change it to a multiply. Multiply darkens your objects, but it does it in a subtle way. You can then change the factor to change the power of the effect, or you can change the factor over here as well until it's something you like. Also under the render tab, we've got screen space reflections and I've got some reflections on the bottom there. So that's helping. And we've got a bit of depth to our object, but it probably needs brightening up a bit. So there's two ways to do that. The first one is obvious, just brighten up all your lights. So add one to them and another one if that's not bright enough. Or you can do it in the world tab here. And I've got a very gray background so we can just push that up a bit. So my object's a bit brighter. So we've got a lot more depth to our object now that we're using the three point lighting. But ideally we want an HDRI lighting our scene. So when I go to look dev mode, that actually uses an HDRI as you can see there. And actually it does quite a nice job, especially when we've got the ambient occlusion turned on as well. So we want the same in the render tab. So if I press shift A in here and go to texture and we choose an environment texture for an HDRI. I add that in, hook it up, it should all go pink that means we've got no texture in here yet. So I'll open up one of my HDRI files. 
Now I get mine from HDRI Haven amongst other places, but these are the ones I have on my system at the moment. I tend to go for a nice greyish color. So a very mid level color, but you might want to add a bit of atmosphere to yours. So you can go for sort of greeny colors or yellowy colors, but I'm going to choose this old city center here. So you can see more of what an HDRI is because you can see it all in the background there and that is offering light onto our subject. So a combination of the HDRI and the three point lighting will give a nice effect. You can change the strength of the HDRI if you need to turn it up a bit. I'll put that back to one. Now the other things you'll probably want to do is you go across the film and choose transparent background that will put them in a transparent background and get rid of your HDRI. And the very last thing is down to color management. Now I do believe that Filmic is on by default, but if it isn't, make sure you've got Filmic ticked and then you can play with the look. If you leave it on medium contrast, that's best for taking it into another program and editing it. But if you want it straight from Blender to look nice, then perhaps increase the contrast. I've gone for a high contrast here. And lastly, you can put the exposure up here as well. Just be a little bit careful not to go too far with this. The gamma will do a similar sort of thing. So that's a very quick guide to how I make my renders look quite nice. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.